So here is what we are proposing. The only acceptable deficit would be one that responds to a recession or to a, an extraordinary circumstance, that is, war or a natural disaster, with a cost exceeding $3 billion in one year. That is responsible and reasonable. Our government understands that there are circumstances when a stimulus and a deficit is called for. The bill would acknowledge the potential need for deficits to, I should say the proposed bill, would acknowledge the potential need for deficits to counter economic decline. Within 30 days of a published deficit, the finance minister would be required to testify before the House of Commons Committee on Finance and present a plan with concrete timelines to return to balanced budgets. The plan would include a freeze on operating spending and a wage freeze for cabinet ministers and deputy ministers. We would propose that if a finance minister posted a deficit outside of these extraordinary circumstances, an automatic operating freeze would go into effect. And this operating freeze is important. Mr. Chrétien responded to a deficit by hiking taxes. The financial security of Canadians was put at risk. We cannot repeat the 1990s. The proposed legislation would ensure that we fix deficits by restraining spending first. It is, of course, an announcement full of bitter ironies. This is a government uh, that added $150 billion to the debt of Canadians that set record deficits uh, for Canadian governments that ran deficits for seven years, now announcing uh, a profound belief in uh, balanced budgets. It's uh, a minister uh, that hid under his desk, paralyzed uh, about what to do uh, with his budget because of the drop in the price of oil, now emerges in a new fiscal year, having failed to provide a ba uh, budget in advance of this fiscal year to uh, dictate to uh, future governments how they are to respond uh, to circumstances with what are clearly uh, arbitrary and politically motivated uh, criteria, as far as I can tell. Um, it's a bitter irony that we have a minister talking about mom and dad sitting around the table stretching uh, their dollars when this is a government that politically managed uh, what might have been a surplus down to zero uh, and taking the collective wealth of Canadians and through things like income splitting transferring it into the hands of the uh, wealthiest of Canadians. And it appears uh, very much like this is the last act of a government on its way out trying to tie the hands of its successors. Well, the Liberal Party actually does have a solid record of fiscal responsibility. And we would, as a government, be fiscally responsible. And we would focus our investments uh, on helping middle class families that are, that are struggling, but also on creating jobs and growth. Uh, uh, with a visionary infrastructure plan that would invest federal money but it would also work with some of the smartest pension funds in the world, global pools of capital, and help create jobs and growth today and a more competitive economy for the future and, and more livable communities. Uh, we would invest in jobs and growth. The Conservatives have done nothing to invest in jobs and growth and have in fact cut infrastructure investment from $2 billion to $200 million per year in budget 2013, all to create an illusory surplus on the eve of an election. He's, trying to, picture, he's trying to paint a picture of like father, like son. How are you going to counter that? How are the Liberals going to handle that? Well, uh, you know, they, that would be like us blaming, blaming uh, Harper for the Avro Arrow. Uh, I mean, this is, we're talking about when Canadians hear Joe Oliver and, uh, uh, and, and uh, Stephen Harper talk about the 70s, uh, they, it just reminds Canadians how absolutely out of touch Stephen Harper is with the, with the realities of middle class families today, middle class families that are struggling. But the reality is we need jobs and growth. And Mr. Harper is not presenting a plan for jobs and growth. He can't even present a budget on time. And today we hear basically a, a, some, a, a blatant attempt to distract Canadians from the dismal fiscal power government with a phony pre-election promise 
on balanced budgets from a government with no credibility in that area. A lot of economists say whether you balance or not is largely irrelevant. Obviously, you had to delay your budget because of the crash in crude. We don't see any relief coming soon. Would a little bit of stimulus be the worst thing in the world this year to keep the economy humming and perhaps not balanced? Well, I'm not going to talk about the content of the budget. Uh, we're not looking at a, at a budget that, uh, uh, that uh, will be cutting. Uh, we're looking at a budget that uh, will be providing benefits uh, to Canadians and uh, encouraging more job growth. We do not, however, need uh, the kind of stimulus budget that we, uh, that, uh, we had uh, during the Great Recession because we're not in a recession now. Uh, but we are going to continue uh, to make investments in the future. Quickly, I just want to ask, what's your oil price assumption for the budget? Would you base your numbers on well, we're going to be meeting uh, soon with the private sector economists, and we're going to be basing our um, our projections on uh, on their uh, on their views about where the economy is going, including uh, the direction of oil prices. Uh, Minister um, Rita Fritcher from the Wall Street Journal. Right. I just want to clarify that when you talk about a balanced budget, you're saying it's balanced, but there's no surplus. Is that correct? Well, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not saying uh, that. What I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, there will not be a deficit. Uh, to the extent there's a surplus, uh, that goes to the repayment of debt. Could you um, just uh, give us some idea as to why you're confident that the budget will be balanced? Just a bit more color on that. Well, we've looked at the numbers very carefully. We've uh, taken into account the, uh, uh, the projections uh, to date, but they're going to be refined uh, next week. Um, and uh, we've, of course, uh, analyzed uh, uh, just what the, the expenditures are that we can, we can afford, and uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be making our determination uh, based on that, and there will be, of course, a cushion, as there always is. Thank you. Uh, Prime Minister, you've already announced your uh, family tax package. Uh, a number of other announcements for the budget have already come out. We know that the 2014-15 uh, budget is going to be balanced. Uh, what's left for the budget on April 21st? Uh, you have to wait to the budget. Um, <laughs> I think you knew the answer to that question. Just maybe to correct the preamble, we don't anticipate the balance, budget to be balanced in 14-15, although we're very close. It will be balanced 15-16, the year uh, coming up. Um, on um, uh, on why we're doing this, um, you know, let's just be clear why this is important. Um, we know that when, government, when governments uh, don't balance their budget, we know what happens. Uh, those deficits tend to become bigger and bigger over time. I mean, this was the history at the federal level. Uh, I can remember as a boy once the small deficits started to be run in the early 70s by the Trudeau government and it went on for a generation to the point where we had to have drastic cuts to our services, to health care and education, 25% cuts uh, that were made back in the 1990s by the then Liberal government. By balancing our budget now, we assure that the services we are delivering will continue to be delivered to Canadians. That's what we're doing at the federal level. We assure that the tax levels, the lower tax levels we brought in, will be maintained. And we also assure, of course, if we ever actually need to run a deficit for a serious situation, that we have the fiscal flexibility to do so.